What's up everybody? Today I'm going to test out $20 boots versus $429 boots. Full disclosure, I got a deal on these so I didn't pay that, but uh, basically very expensive boots versus some a Craigslist find. Um, these are the Progression Boa. They only have one Boa thing, mostly in one of the recent bids. Said the two dual Boas were better for tightening different sections. But, uh, you know, maybe they were a couple hundred dollars originally. I, uh, I wasn't able to find them on the website, so apparently they don't make these ones anymore. But, yeah, they hardly looked used at all. So for $20 in my size, hell yeah, let's give them a whirl and see how they compare to a more high-end one. Um, speaking of high-end ones, I've done this before. I've, I've even bought uh, Burton XLS, XLXs for $40 off Craigslist. And they worked, I uh, used them for about two seasons and they were, you know, used, but, you know, they're a hell of a lot better than my previous boots and I didn't have to spend $400. So, uh, they treated me well for a couple of seasons just by shopping around on Craigslist. Obviously, you're not always going to be able to find a pair in your size that is of decent quality at all for 20 bucks. But, uh, you know, if you're only getting, if you're brand new at snowboarding and don't want to spend thousands to get into it, you know, the Craigslist is a very great way to probably get some boards and stuff. Um, just do your research and make sure they're appropriate for you. You don't want nothing too aggressive if you're a beginner. But uh, yeah, for you can get some great finds for a great price through there. And I've done that for a lot of my vintage boards. I'll feature those someday. But uh, uh, let's talk more about boots. When I first started snowboarding in the late 80s, I remember riding on Sorel boots and oh man, one time I was in the mogul field at Wild Mountain and I fell and my whole foot came out of the boot. The boot stayed inside of the binding and my sock was just dangling out and my whole bare foot and I was right under the chairlift and everyone was laughing at me. Oh, good times. Uh, it's weird because I can't even get embarrassed like that on the mountain no more. I can try to get on the chairlift strapped in or tr try to get on the gondola strapped in and that don't work i can be a dork and try to side slip down the whole mountain or use poles all day and i just can't capture that feeling anymore but uh but that's all right um but after that yeah you had some air walks that were too big for me those sucked I, you know same type of thing my I had so much heel lift because they were just too big. Um, and then after that, got some Airwalk Obliques of the right size. And those were basically, that was probably a 1995 boot, I bet. Um, they were like a high top, the lightest boot, I think, on the market. And they were just like a high top shoe, essentially. No inside liner or anything. And I got really good on at snowboarding on those. And I bought them just because of the weight. Because they were so light, but they are so flexy. And yeah, as soon as, uh, once I started riding for Burton, they gave me some and the first day riding those things I was like oh shit this is how it's supposed to feel there was just like a power because of you know a certain amount of structural integrity the boot to the boot of the boot to transfer into the binding and perform a certain way so Burton's what I've been used to since then so that's why I keep getting Burton I'd love to try some other brands so we'll see about that it's just hard to you know get other brands so uh because who, who wants to yeah I that but uh yeah. Let's go run the test on the mountain because I definitely know how Burton b b boots feel, you know, the Imperials and, you know, before that Ions and Rulers and, you know, I definitely know how they feel so I want to compare some of the lower end ones or some Craigslist ones versus a, you know, high end, very stiff boot of the uh, Driver X. So let's go to the mountain. Test and boots day. Uh, pro, random pro tip. So, uh, there's a big old line on the preferred chair. It's a longer one and zero line for this little short one. I'm going to be able to take this, get a full, you know, the half lap in. And by that time, the line will have kind of diminished here. So sometimes it pays, it pays to just look around and see what lift might be best for you. Wow. <laughs> If I ever get, told you guys how much I love snowboarding, this morning I was just ripping it up and I think I let out a couple of tears. I was so happy. Oh my god, the snow is so good compared to normal at this time of year. There's not rocks in the runs. There's a lot more than just the one run they normally open. It's, uh, it is really good conditions out here. 
but uh, yeah, still a little too busy for me to be doing just selfie taping. And plus, it's so early in the year that you know I just want to get the, my groove back in. But uh, so for the boots, the Driver X's premium stiffness. When I'm side slipping, no discernible difference. When I'm doing anything on the toe side and buttering type of things, absolutely, it's uh, I can just feel that extra stiffness against my shin, and it transfers extra power into the toe side edge, especially heel side carves. I'm not sure if it's too much different. Uh, unless I'm doing a buttering on the nose or tail leaning forward or back a bit, but on the toe side Yeah, it's really definitely noticeable um, So uh, yeah, I'll, I, I think for carving these are you know Really pretty good and you know right up the alley for what I do so I'm not fully used to them yet But uh, but they definitely feel pretty good My only complaint would be where the speed laces go through and this has been on all the boots when I really crank the laces down tight I can feel where the laces go through there's kind of like some ridges the plastic ridges that it goes through and when i crank them down i can feel that and then when i crank my bindings down super tight over them i can feel that too but i just get used to those type of pains so ain't no biggie i'll do a couple of turns here and then go put on the cheaper boots I bring out extra gear on the mountain I uh, here's the other boots I lock it up in a decline little lock and then I don't worry too much about it I'll put a link in the description the backpack from the US Open 1998 it was either 98 or 99 made the finals of the US Open qualified ahead of some of my heroes like Terrier my mom cried and yeah, I went for it in the finals, fell, so didn't place well. Without these boots being old or anything, uh, they looked like almost brand new to me. The structural integrity and the flex of these is so much different. Much more comfortable to wear. The others feel more like a, you know, an alpine snowboard boot, which is kind of like a ski boot, a hard shell. You know, it's very stiff in the front. But uh, for performance, that's amazing. This, I don't think it's gonna perform as good. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'm not gonna say these are grade A dog shit, but uh, they do not offer much performance. They're just, you know, flex every which way, and uh, you know, I'm used to a certain performance level out of my equipment especially for the carving stuff and uh, these ones do not deliver it for a beginner hey it might not be so bad they're, they're actually more comfortable to walk around in because of how much flex they have but definitely not for me so yeah if you need a pair of boots 8.5 beginner level boots and you're in Breckenridge let me know I will give them to you because I would rather pay twice the price for those other ones than what do it do keep riding in these. Of course I can make them work, but uh, yeah, they just do not deliver the same performance. But uh, hey, I just wanna say thank you for watching. Love all you guys. Happy shred. Hopefully you guys get a good early season too. And God fly. Wow, I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> Next time. <laughs>